All right, uh, designers, here is a quick video on, uh, or it's a demo video on carving. You should have already uh, watched the PowerPoints. If, if not, I guess you could watch this first and then uh, look through the PowerPoints and watch the video on the PowerPoints. But either way, this is meant to be watched in conjunction with the PowerPoints for our unit on subtractive carving. Um, and uh, at the time that I'm carving this, we're working on non-objective uh, carving. Uh, and we are in a middle stage where, where we are practicing carving away for the first time. The, we did a practice already with clay modeling. Now we're going to do uh, a soap or wax carving. In this demo, I'm going to do soap because it's a little faster, but I have some, some wax here and some things I'm going to talk about. But yes, this demo is mainly focused on carving away. It should be kind of probably like your first um, project, certainly in this class, that's actually carving away. So... Let's jump right to it. So first off, let me talk about some some things first as we get started. Uh, anytime you're picking a material uh, to start carving, uh, make sure you have the correct tools. Um, like for this uh, class, I've, I've recommended everybody grab uh, this carving tool. Um, it's one of the, I can't remember the model, but it's just from Hobby Lobby, and it comes with a bunch of different bits. Uh, scoops and blades and all different kinds of things and they actually are stored here in the back I don't think it's a super great storage mechanism, but it does do the job um, And I'll, I'll take one out and show you here. So it's got kind of a little cinch um, Thing here. I'll just start with the blade um, And this is preferable to carving with an exacto blade because these are much less sharp The blades aren't as big and plus you have all the scoops and different things. So this is a it's a chuck that you can actually loosen up, sorry, and then it gives space so you can slide the blade in um, and then cinch it down. Like I said, you could probably do all this with like a pocket knife, but it's going to be a little more difficult and a little more dangerous uh, than just using this nice handy carving tool. Um, yeah, so you're going to carve with this. Uh, I have some tips on you know safety and how to use this uh, here in a second, but uh, what you're going to actually carve, like I said in this demo, I'm going to do so. Uh, but you may uh, be working with wax at home. Um, and, and one of the things I want to talk about, this is true regardless of what material you're using, but you need to remember that any time you carve from a solid block, if all you're going to do is carve away, you have to make sure that everything that is going to be in the sculpture is going to fit inside the block. And it's also a good idea to make sure your block's not too big. Right, so you know, when I first bought this, it was twice as long, and I cut it with a serrated knife uh, that allowed me to get it down to close to the proportions of uh, the the sculptures that I wanted to work with. Um, and I will say too, when I cut it in half, I noticed, you know, like this particular wax, this was kind of threw me through a loop. It has a channel through the middle, um, which made me kind of change what sculpture I was going to make out of it. Uh, I decided to, you know, I went back to the, the clay models we've done. Uh, in a previous class, and I picked this uh, model because it does not necessarily require something in the middle. See how it's all four kind of different size, different shaped arms that go around, you know, they don't actually, you know, have a, a, propor a portion of material in the middle. It's negative space. So it's okay that there's this negative space of the hole in the block, okay? So there's that, and like I said, I cut it down uh, so that it's like a little bit closer so I don't have to just carve and carve and carve, okay? But yeah, the really key is noticing just in general, uh, like I said, that this shape is going to be, you know, need to be hollow in the middle. So uh, this is the, the, the other half, you know, of the, the sculpture. Like I said, it was a solid block. Um, there we go. It was a solid block. I cut this this half off, you know, got it into a block that was more conducive to carving. And then I carved from here, and I'll show you the steps that I used, but you can see this is my finished version of this. It is, of course, edited a little bit. It's not exactly the same proportions. Things are a little different. I added a, a rectangular base just because I was starting with a rectangular block. Uh, this is the one angle uh, when you're finished with sculptures uh, for this unit uh, where you are permitted. Oops. To, uh, go ahead and have it be the rectangular original shape of the block is when it's the base. Otherwise, uh, I have made sure to carve something that has an interesting negative space, that gap in the middle. It looks different from this angle. It looks like it's been changed from this angle. All the angles have engaging uh, changes in form and positive and negative space. But in any case, yeah, so this was my, my practice. Uh, I go through it. 
You can see all the different stages in the PowerPoints, like I said, that accompany this video. But let's go ahead and talk about what I'm going to carve for this video. So, um, when carving soap, it's the same sort of thing. You have to think about what shape you have when you start. There are soaps that start being you know, nice rectangular blocks like this, but in this case, I really like to carve with Dove, and it allows me to prove a point about you know, being mindful of the shape that you start with. So, now that it, I am going to be working with Dove rather than the, the block of wax, I picked a, sh a, a form from my clay models, the other clay models. Everybody, uh, at least at the time that I'm carving this, we're doing two different uh, carved models based off of the, the five clay models we did before. Uh, but in any case, I picked a form that, you know, if I need to curve it, it only, you know, basically it only makes this shape more interesting to put that curve in it uh, because, you know, the, the block of dove itself is curved. I'm kind of aware that uh, I'm either going to be able to get the shape out of it or I'm going to be okay if I need to curve the shape. That's okay with me. Uh, but in any case, yeah, just being really cautious, conscious when you get started of the shape of the block and how it's going to lead to you know, the shape that you have at the end is pretty important. So, as you get started uh, carving your block, you want to take a look uh, at your sculpture and remember uh, what we did with the first project where we did an orthographic drawing, okay? We're not going to do all six sides in this. But I do think it is good, again, when laying out your plan to think orthographically. That's what I keep saying in my PowerPoint. Don't necessarily draw all six sides, but think about all six sides. So when I look at this shape, I know, you know, from here, I want, you know, this is what the shape's going to look like, okay, from the front here. I'm just going to look at the sculpture for now. Then from the side, it's going to be a little bit different. It's kind of a boring shape right now, honestly. That's just like a block, um, you know, and actually, like I said, it might just help that I'm going to put that slight curve in it, right? That's going to it's going to change things a little bit. From the top, again, kind of a boring shape, but it's it's cool how you know it's coming to a point and then you can see all the different the sides as you move down. And then of course, yeah, the base is is pretty dull. But in any case, I think about, you know, left, right, front, back, top, bottom. I think about all of those things as I am starting to plan to carve from the block. Okay, so that said, I've thought about all six sides. I, I mean, technically, I used to teach this where I would have the students draw all six sides on the block. However, what I figured out is if you draw on this side and this side and this side and the back and the bottom and the top, if you do all that, here's, here's the thing. One, you'll start to carve this. You'll get to a hard part. You'll get, you'll get to where you, you don't want to keep going here and it seems easier to start working from the side and you will skip to drawing one of the sides or the bottom or top before you have fully finished your first steps. It talks about this again in the PowerPoints, but it's really important when you start a carving to start by just approaching it from one angle, right? We're going to cut away all of, all of this that's outside of this uh, first angle drawing that I've made. I picked one side, the most predominant one, of course, the front, what I'm, what I'm going to call the front, and I did that drawing. I, I didn't do the other six, but the other thing is once you do this drawing, if you had the other five drawings on here, as soon as you started to carve this away, that drawing would be gone. As soon as you carve that chunk out, your side drawing is gone, so it's totally pointless. It might be a good exercise, but it can be confusing. It might lead you to accidentally, like I said, skip ahead, try to do a different angle before you finish this first one. So I recommend you just pick one angle and then you draw it. And that allows you to focus. And, and what you want to do is take away all of the negative space from one angle before you move to another angle. And actually, it's it's you're really going to do it from two angles. You're going to take the negative space away from here, but you're also going to flip it over. And before you do the side, you're going to do the back. Don't draw that right now because it's going to be easier if you've gotten started and done most of the work from one angle. But you're going to go directly to the opposite side, carve from there. That's, that's what I did here. I, you know, I carved all this way as far as I could, and then I carved all this way. It's in the PowerPoints again. Uh, all before I did anything from either side. Okay, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. All right, enough of me talking. Let's actually start 
carving. Okay, real quick, notice that I'm about to carve towards my finger. I don't recommend that. If I do it at any point in this demo, think about the fact that you should do as I say, not as I do. My dad used to say that all the time. But basically, you need to be sure at all times that you are cutting away from yourself. Also, be conscious of what you're cutting on. You know, like I'm going to really have to be careful to be sure I don't cut up this uh, little demo pad here. Okay, notice right away, I got a little, got a little anxious. I pried with my knife rather than, than actually cutting, um, and I chipped away a, a big chunk of what I had drawn here. Luckily, I know there's going to be more space. I know it's going to be okay, so I don't freak out, but it is something to be aware of. If you do have to cut towards, well, just don't cut towards yourself. I did this yesterday. I did actually cut myself a little bit yesterday, so I shouldn't talk, but just, just be careful. Um, do your best to cut away from yourself at all times, but it's also really important that you don't dig in and pry, right? And certainly don't jab. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't just shovel and, and dig. You want to actually, see how the that came off there uh, while I was in mid, mid sentence. Uh, but you want to really carefully like scoop away the material. Just do a little bit at a time. If you find that you're taking too big of chunks out and you know like big pieces are flying off, you, you want to stop. You want to reassess what you're doing, okay? But you can see basically all I've started doing here is cutting and, and it's hard hard for you to tell, but I'm making sure I'm just looking from one angle. If I do look from this angle, I'm making sure to carve only minimally, and it's just so I can see better, you know, what I'm working with. It's still not, it's definitely not to actually shape, you know, the form. Anyway, but see, so I'm starting to carve away. Also notice, I'm really staying wide of my original drawing, okay? That's, that's pretty key as well. Sorry, I'm getting soap in my mouth. Washing my mouth, that was so. Okay. Just keep carving. If I figure out how to edit this, this is where I'll slip into time lapse. Although, honestly, this file's so big, I don't know if it will ever load on iMovie. So, you guys can just kind of hear me musing about iMovie and photo editing. While I carve, notice still, get yep, all from one side. All from one side. All from one and one from all. I'm going to try to get through this as quick as I can. I know these videos are always massive. Be sure, at no point should you be looking at this side to start carving out shapes. One, because you haven't got a plan, which is a good reason why I said not to draw all the angles, but also just because you will probably make a mistake if you do that. Just trust me on that. I've taught this project several years now. Now, what's actually interesting is I'm teaching you to carve this with the soap, and the green foam will actually be easier to carve as far as actual like pressure and movement. But I personally think the green foam is a little tougher to carve in some ways because it's so delicate. I'm sorry if at any point I start to Um, you could use your scoop tool for some parts of this. I'm not really, I don't know, I noticed, you know, it's this size and with this soft of a material, it's, it's kind of okay to just, uh, use the blade. So I'm making sure we're still recording here. Recording is in progress, but we're good. I hope everybody can hear me. During all of this, it would really, really suck if I have to do a voiceover. Figure that out. Um, I guess I could, at that point, like I said, just time lapse and tell you to refer to the PowerPoint. I don't know. I'm just looking for conversation filler here. Again, I'm cutting into the side now, but it's it's more to get a shape that I see. It's not about cutting any silhouette in the side. It's all about just trying to get this shape. You guys seeing it? All from one side.
tempted to pause this for the duration of this carving, but I don't want to accidentally lose my progress or something. But I do think I have the ability to pause this. Maybe starting to cut a base here in the bottom. Okay, so good start. I said now this one there's not like a hole or like a large negative space so it's actually I could pretty much just carve from one side and not have to go to the back because from the back it's already kind of taking shape but let me go ahead and show you what I would normally do just so you see it um, so I a lot of times before I start working from the side I will actually go ahead and just you know get a good idea of what I want to happen on opposite side. I'm going to use pencil for this side. This doesn't really seem like Sharpie wants to work. Neither does pencil. Too much soap. I can kind of still get the idea. Let's see, I'm going to carve a little bit of an edge here. That's further than I need to go. Carve an edge, carve an edge. way more material here from this back angle than I need to have. So let me just go ahead and start carving a little here too. Got a little chip off again. That's okay. Just be careful not to, you know, one thing I notice with most materials is it's not a great idea to aggressively like push them in. You really need to cut them. You need to slice them. Make them smooth cuts. Nice long scoops. Okay, I'm getting pretty close, I think, here to a place where I want to start approaching a different mainly for the sake of your time as the viewer. Okay. So how about that thing that happened this weekend at the thing? That person really got themselves in a predicament. No, I don't know. Uh, just kidding. I'm making a joke because if I use this in another semester, surely somebody will have gotten themselves into some trouble. Right? I don't know. Hope that ages well. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time to move on. Okay. I think I've got enough start carving. Like I said, I'm not going to try to go for perfect here in this video. I need to respect your time and allow you to kind of get started yourself. Okay, but I have got, notice, like I said, the silhouette carved all the way through. And I guess, you know, something I, I think you need to really think about that, that this image might not be giving you the idea of is just even things that are in the back that you can't see, like say uh, in this, this practice one that I did, uh, say that this piece right here was like 
you know, coming out this way and this one was coming out this way, right? Now, it may kind of seem like from this angle, you only really need to worry about this front one. But if you really think of it all the way through like a full silhouette, you still need to leave material for this one. Okay, so just don't forget that, that, that you're carving all the way through the shape. Okay, so anyways, that gets us to carving the side. Now, let's go ahead and draw orthographically on this side. What's good news, this isn't very complicated, but you'll notice really quickly As soon as I start carving, the majority of what needs to be carved away, which is stuff from the front, all this drawing that I did from before, it's mostly gone anyway, but now it's really going to go, okay? I'm going to now start carving away the negative space of a silhouette from this side, okay? So, you'll start to see it takes shape a little bit more, like from multiple angles. And like I said, it's kind of cool. See, boom, my that front drawing, toast, gone. Okay, uh, but you'll kind of see. Uh, sorry, like I said, that this is actually turning out more interesting in a way than the side angle of this original sculpture because I've got to make it fit that curve. But the big deal I want to make sure I do is make it smaller from the top. You know, it starts small and then gets bigger as it moves down to the base. So I know I'm carving a lot towards myself here, but notice I'm, I'm trying to really control it, be very soft, and my the blade on this thing is really not sharp. I'm learning here. It's been five, six years since I carved any soap, and I am learning. It's actually very easy to carve, so you could probably do this with just like a palette knife or something. But anyways, now if you had material, you could make this thing wiggle back too. That would be kind of cool to develop. Kind of get a little bit of that. Okay, but see, I'm starting to take the shape, and I know it's weird you're watching me do this from all kinds of goofy angles, because um, I'm trying to hurry, that's the main reason. Um, but you're seeing the idea that it needs to take shape, you know, from one side first, and then the other. Um, and, I don't know, as you get further and further, you're going to start to get to a place where none of your drawing initial like initial shape drawings actually matter all that much um, you're going to start to see basically that you can do whatever you're going to start to see the shape taking a uh, form you know developing into a 3d form and so you're going to be able to work more and more just directly without having to work from any kind of drawing Okay, starting to see it coming along, getting rid of the doves, cutting the dove out, boom. Notice too, I'm even shaping my base here a little bit, the base, Slip, shape of the base. All right, I'm just going to mutter. Try to make it as entertaining to watch this video as it would be to hear me mutter in real life. I wonder how many of you have just muted this by now. Probably a couple, at least. Anyways, developing, developing. Now I'm just going to start taking off smaller and smaller bits until I really start to see my shape come through. You know, one thing you can do, um, sorry, it said it was going to end my meeting. That seems rude. In any case, uh, 
Yeah, so one thing you can do is, oh, kind of work from three quarters view. You know, say you're getting wrapped up from the, the full side view, you can kind of then step to three quarters view. But once you start doing that, you're really, like I said, kind of getting to a place where you're sculpting the shape just fine. Um, okay, well, because of how long this video is turning out to be, and these demo videos are always huge, I don't know, this camera for some reason takes really big megabytes. I'm going to go ahead and stop this before I get totally finished, but I think you've got uh, kind of the idea of, you know, how, how it looks and like how you need to put it together. Um, keep developing. It's getting more and more specific. It's getting closer and closer to looking like this, uh, yeah, this little clay model. So what I'm actually going to do, this is kind of weird, but I'm going to go ahead and hit pause. And then if it allows me, I'm just going to jump back on and keep recording when I'm a little bit further down, like pretty much done with this. Uh, but if it does not load, um, then, or like if the pausing and starting again doesn't work smoothly, then basically I'll just go ahead and upload it at this point. Okay, so I'm going to stop for a second uh, so you can see. Uh, but yeah, you can see this is, this is my second practice. Uh, I would like you to get closer to the final product than this, uh, but you've seen most of the demo of how to carve. So just keep going in. If you break this, I think it's a good idea. Like I did have this. Uh, this one break on me. I broke the arm off on accident when I was trying to carve out this interior empty space. Uh, I just took a toothpick. I softened this up with heat. You could soften the soap up with water. And then I took, I actually broke a little piece off of a toothpick, stuck it down into the, the base, and then, you know, had the point of the toothpick sticking up and just, and then heated the, the little part uh, that I had broken off and just shoved it down. So there's like a toothpick inside holding this together. And then I actually melted this some more and kind of scraped and smoothed it out. Um, and then I did all that after I already finished carving both parts. I finished carving this before I stuck it back on, which actually ended up causing, like, you know, why it looks a little thinner there. Um, but it's going to be important that you kind of figure out, you know, how to, how to react uh, if something breaks. You know, do you change your design or do you, you know, try something like I did where you use a toothpick? Uh, if you use soap, you could probably use a toothpick, you know, in addition to the water. Uh, whatever, but you need to, to kind of think about that, make a plan for what happens if it breaks or just starts to go off the path. That's part of the reason we do these non-objective uh, sculptures is because, uh, you know, we can adapt a little better. But in any case, um, I think it this that ought to be good enough for you to get started if, if the pausing thing doesn't work, um, you know, on my recording here. But uh, I'm trying to think of the last thing I was going to say that... Oh, when we do the floral foam next week, uh, you can use your bamboo skewers from way back. Uh, if in this course we uh, use bamboo skewers, just like those little grill skewers um, that you use for making kebabs and stuff. Uh, if, if you still have some of those from working in this class, or you can go get those at Walmart. And uh, bamboo skewers, much like toothpicks, uh, can work as little like stints that you can put inside of the floral foam and then just use Elmer's glue. Um, but in any case, yeah, the final product when we use the floral foam is going to be painted, you know, so keep thinking about all that. Keep making sure, you know, when you're done with your carving that it's interesting negative space, uh, that it's, it's cool from all the different angles. Um, yeah, and that it's, it's really giving you a good experience and helping you practice how to carve this so you can jump into carving the floral foam uh, during our next portion of this unit. So, very cool. I'm going to hit pause if I don't come back. Appreciate you guys. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, let me just get a few more minutes. It's not totally finished still. Um, but if this does tack on to the end, I'm glad I learned that. I could have given you guys a little break in the middle there a little bit earlier. Uh, but yeah, you can see it, it's still got quite a bit more I could carve, but I got the general idea, the general practice uh, down. Plus, I added that little curve. Uh, and it made it a little bigger at the base, all the way up top. Yeah, I kind of played around. Added little ridges, uh, you know, that are on the original, too. And so, yeah, in any case, that is your carving demo, beginning of how to, uh, you know, do some subtractive carving.
carving, uh, check out the PowerPoint, um, and yeah, get these turned in by the due date. Um, thank you very much.